what a game we saw yesterday. Two teams with strong pedigree in African football. And I can tell you, the one that went to the final deserving in the final because we saw doggedness, we saw a team that could absorb pressure, we saw a team that can also give. And at the end of the day, it was the Pharaohs of Egypt that got to the final. Well, uh, somebody just quickly reminded me on my Twitter handle that uh, the two teams that did get to the final in 2017 and um, the last edition, 2019. 2019 are right there in the final. So who picks the trophy? Um, somebody said they should come to West Africa, and I think the best team should have it. Let me formally uh, ask Ebayelo your view about the Nations Cup in Cameroon. Yeah, it has been a fantastic uh, tournament, despite the fact that uh, there's a lot of setback regarding uh, COVID-19, uh, Delta virus, and Omicron. But the tournament has uh, lived up to, to expectation, and it's growing year by year. Yeah, it's good. It's good having the Nations Cup around. When someone says it's good, it's good, that means it has an A+. plus. Um, back then when we were in school, we struggled to get a B. But when you see the man with the A, you envy him. Does that mean that African football has come of age? Well, we still have a long way to go. And we have a lot to do in, our own, in, in this world. I mean, in terms of uh, sponsorship, branding, I mean, uh, bringing the tournament to the level of uh, Europa League and uh, Asian Cup and stuff like that. So, but I sh I'm sure I will get there. Let me stick with you. Something came up in the AFCON that a lot of people didn't see coming like a storm. A tornado. There were surprises. Teams that we least expected to get to a particular level got them there. How do you want to rate that with the Afcon? Yeah, that's why. That's why I said uh, Africa is growing in terms of uh, football level. If you see teams like Comoros and other small teams, I mean, Kibad, Kibad, Malawi, Gambia, Malawi, they are doing fantastically well. And you've got your players now playing in top league in Europe, which is a plus to them. Mm. Akin. Let's come to yesterday game. You, you, you know, I really wish Joel was here. I would have just given Joel an upper court. <laughs> I told him the element of surprise would make this championship exceedingly interesting. We, the Pharaohs were beaten by the Super Eagles. And I want to quote my wife directly. She said, see, team, when we beat, get to the final. And I told her, football is not the way you think about it. Yeah. For you, what did the Pharaohs did right? To get to the final. This was a game for anybody to take. Once it gets to penalty, but we saw two teams that gave it to each other. Uh, well, I will tell you one thing that went perfectly well for the Pharaohs yesterday was they learned their lessons from the game when they play against us. Playing against a team like the Super Eagles that is so physical, so skillful, so tactical, you learn a lot from it. And going forward, they, 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 they reorganize the team. Talking about uh, uh, Kiros, coach of uh, Egypt, he reorganized the team. The way they, the transition from the defense to the midfield was better than it was when they played us. And all the focus was no longer on Salah. They had this young man, Mohamed, in the team, who has been so troublesome to all defense he has played against so far. And yesterday's game against uh, Cameroon, I wasn't surprised. I actually wanted them to win, sentimentally, because Cameroon has uh, I, I, let me tell you this. I was planning that I was thinking that we'll play Cameroon in the final. Really? And we'll beat them in the final in their home soil. Like they like are what they did to us. So but it didn't come that way. Mm. Now that the, the the Egyptians were able to do it for us, I'm happy with the way the game panned out yesterday. And I in fact I will tell you this tournament has lived beyond my expectation. All right. Different views for different uh, opinions. Some people will tell you they wanted to come to the Senegalese because they've never won the AFCON. We'll get to that particular area now. Let's read both teams. They, they, they represented African football. Uh, the first 20 minutes was a little bit of a sizing up of each other, but at the end of 45 minutes, the most hungry team created more chances, and which was the Cameroonian. What went wrong? Well, that is football for you. You might play the best of the best of your football. Without the goals, I mean, your best is not enough then. Yeah, Cameroon played fantastic football. They created all the chances, mm -hmm. but they couldn't break the Egyptian uh, defense, defense, which is part of football. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, uh, for you, Akim, there's a player who I have always had a, a little bit of a snag for, Vicente Abubakar. Probably the very day they declared him 29. I've had that snag, personal opinion. But there was so much focus on him that at the point in time, almost all the midfielders within the Cameroonian team were centering the ball to him. Was that a proper instruction from the coach? If you watch Cameroon, they played, well, I think they played 4-4-2. Yeah. Two 
strikers who were station station in the in the opponent box. Toto it can be and Toto, Vincent. Can be and, can be, and most of the time you see the full backs are joining the attacks, making the pull-outs every time because they are good in the air with this area, but they are very good. So the Jitans read the game perfectly. The cameras played more like the Super Eagles. Physical attacks from the wings, and I tell you, Kiraj is a very experienced coach. He knew what to do to be able to clip the claws of the Lions. Let's come to the Egyptians. Mo Salah is an exceptional player, exceptional right. skill, yeah. and he has actually had that responsibility of taking the Pharaohs to the yeah. next level. Yeah. For yesterday's game, he was more or less somebody who was um, very deep into the midfield, but doing the damage. Uh, what kind of game do you think the Egyptians came to play yesterday, considering the fact that the Mohammed uh, putting on just yes, number two yes. was just a turn in the Cameroonian defense? The good thing about the Cameroonian is they capitalized on the advantage they had. Number one, if you go back to, I mean, the Egyptians, if you go back to, to their history, they have one of the best league in Africa. They have one of the best clubs in Africa. I mean, most of these guys went through the system growing up from the Egyptian league to the top league in Europe. So they have a group of boys that have been together from the league to the national team. So they could click together, play as a team. Mo Salah is the star player in the team. At the same time, if Mo is not there, the team will still play to their to the level uh, of what they want potential. to play. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let me ask you. Uh, usually, there are star players in everything, but for me, I think the player of this tournament, aside Mo Salah, aside Mani, has been Gabaski, the Egyptian goalkeeper. Let me tell you, that goalkeeper is experienced. He's fantastic. For me, he's the best keeper so far in this tournament. You see, when the pressure, if you watch the way the Egyptians play, in fact, all the North African teams have this thing about them. They know where to cool the temper. They know where to rise to the occasion to, to, to raise it up. If you want to go to that, most time when he saves the ball, he goes down. Of course, he has this uh, tie injury. Yeah. But notwithstanding, that was not for him to be playing tricks on the opponent. But he was so good, so smart. And that really played a major role in ensuring that the Cameroonians attack Fizula most of the time. He killed the fire in them. Mm. Okay, let me get your general assessment of the calf. Um, Tournament. It's been a fantastic one, if you ask me, from all ramifications. Because when you put up a champion, apart from the snap we had Olimbe. at um, Olimbe, yeah. some people had to pass on. But if you look at the quality of play, we've had some bad officiating. You can't, nothing is perfect though. Yeah. But from your own general assessment, how do you want to read the outcome? I think it's 95 over 100. Ooh, yeah. that's me, classic. Yeah, because the, the gap between the last outcome and this present AFCON is quite huge. Mm. There's a lot of improvements in terms of, I mean, player quality, player quality, team, quality team quality, the viewership. facility, I mean, participation fee, branding, sponsorship. It has been a fantastic tournament. Mm. The, 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 the growth has been awesome. Mm. And if they can keep that momentum, I think African football is going places. All right, uh, I know there are people who sneak on people's um, Play out. We do this on YouTube. We have on our site. I hope some people are watching. Musepi, your guys should be seeing. Oh, rather hearing what everybody is saying. For you, Akim, um, teams like Gambia, they've come, they've gone. Teams like Comoros, they've come, they've gone. Uh, what do you think teams like Algeria, Ghana, who left at the earlier stage, should do? Because by Sunday, the tournament is all over. There will be a general assessment. Should do when we talk about 2023 um, Afcon. Well, I really don't know what to tell those uh, people to do, talking about Tunisia, Algeria, Dada, Ghana, Algeria. because the, particularly the North Africans, they, they have good sports administrators, good football administrators. They have standard and well-equipped league, and they know where, they will do their own reassessment and get to know where the, 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 the fault were and how to... Now, it's not about going back to the blackboard. Yeah. Uh, so, no, they know I want what the drawing board. The drawing board, I want the drawing board has been broken. Yeah. Yeah. So they know what to do. They would, I know they will take care of that. And going forward, you can imagine what the next World Cup qualifiers and Nations Cup qualifiers will be with, those, with this upset we saw in this tournament. Yeah. So African football is on the right. And I know those teams have failed. The big soccer teams have failed. We we'll do the right thing when the time comes. There is a match coming up. We have a final between Senegal and Egypt. Egypt. We also have a World Cup qualifier between Egypt. Senegal and Egypt. You know somebody posted <laughs> on my wall, he said, let's do it 50-50, party party. Yeah. Uh, let Egypt take the Nations Cup, Cup Senegal go to the World Cup. Cup. How do you rate that? Is it sheer destiny or just sheer providence? 
Well, I can't predict who will win the Nations Cup and who will be at the World Cup. But I know one team will get the Nations Cup, one will go be at the World Cup. Supposing both tickets goes to one team. Yeah, still the same thing. Football. Yeah, fo I like yeah, that. I like football. that. Football. Yeah. Because you can't predict. You can. You can crack anywhere. Yeah, you can. Okay, let me stick with you, Ebayro. Uh, the host nation is out. Yeah. And we all know that the involvement of a host nation in the championship has massive trend in that championship. Yeah. What reaction do you think the Cameroons will be having right now that the Lions sleeping though, because they still have a game tomorrow, yeah. but what reaction do you think the fans will be having right now? They, I'm sure they won't be happy because they, they expect to be at the final and even, I mean, win uh, the tournament as a host nation. And they've got, they've got some fantastic players in their, in their team. But again, this is football. You might play all the best what you want to play without goals, nothing. Nothing. Nothing counts. There's a player in Cameroon, Kai, C-I-A. Yeah. That young man is a fantastic Exceptional. player. Exceptional. That's just the word. Exceptional. Fantastic player. Uh, let, me, let me just chip into what you just said uh, concerning the direction of the fans. Yesterday we saw it on, the, uh, on social media how the fans were ranting violently, destroying things. Uh, I would just say if there is a way the, God, the president of the country or even Eto can come out and give them some suiting words of advice to take it easy. They have had a very good tournament, no yes, doubt. Yeah. And everybody wants to, particularly the host nation. It happened to us. It happened to it's us. About, so yeah. let them learn from it that it comes now, it goes away tomorrow. Did you take it easy? Learn from it, it comes now, it goes away tomorrow. You can't have it all to yourself. The Afcon is still in here. There's a top place game, there's a final. Good football is meant for everybody and is meant to be enjoyed. We're going on this break. Everybody will still be here. We're going to be talking about the top place match between Bukano Faso and Cameroon. I want to get his view before he goes. And Colonel Ahmed, uh, Ahmedu, will be coming in to join us. And Akim Busari is still in here. So after the break, we'll be talking about uh, the Bukano Faso and Cameroon game. We'll be right back. <laughs> 